in 2005, Monolith Sphere really split the PC gaming community in half. Half of us loved the spectacular AI, stunning combat model and the resulting crazy John Woo inspired firefights. But half of us hated the repetitive environments, the lacklustre level design and the limited stable of enemies. While Monolith has taken steps to try to resolve all of the perceived flaws of the original, somewhere along the line they've lost their way and while the game possesses all of the things that made Fear so great, this is not the sequel Fear deserved. Picking up slightly before Fear's explosive ending, you play as some random guy who isn't in Fear. Your initial goal being to capture Genevieve Aristide, a notable yet absent character in the original. Of course, everything goes tits up pretty quickly since, well, the city explodes and you find yourself after a surgery with the super reflexes of the original fear guy. And of course, Armour is going around doing her elf and lied thing, making people explode and fly around on ceilings and stuff. The original story is really quite excellent, both thought-provoking and emotional. Its great flaw is that it was told in the worst way possible. The phone calls of the original, while occasionally insightful for those willing to listen, were completely boring. And Fear 2 has, for some reason I can't figure out, taken a step backwards. Now you collect text logs, which are pretty much the same as Fear's phone calls. In other words, they're boring as hell, often irrelevant non-information, and now you actually have to read them. People who want to experience the full story will feel obliged to read every one, but rather than being rewarded with entertaining nuggets that flesh out the story, it's more of a punishment for having the audacity to dare to try to experience the story. Add to this a story which is itself bland, it's a mere continuation of a story we already know, since just about everything was answered in the original, and there's nothing to uncover or learn besides the mundane and uninteresting. The game's entire story seems to hinge on its final scene, which I won't divulge. Uh, this scene made me make a face that's halfway between a smirk and a grimace. It's amusing and wonderful and ridiculous and stupid all at the same time. It also probably means Fear 3 is coming. Of course, most people won't be playing Fear 2 for its story. It was, after all, the gunplay that made the original so beloved, and Fear's combat is more or less intact here, but a huge number of minor annoyances really pile up and mar an otherwise excellent, perhaps even flawless, combat model. The original game had some utterly spectacular AI. At the time of its release, it was unquestionably the greatest corridor FPS AI out there. And that's probably still true today. I haven't noticed any obvious improvements to Fear's AI, but with an AI like that, it really just doesn't matter. So, the guys still take cover, use grenades to flush you out, retreat when wounded, climb ladders, leap through windows, hop over stuff, and it all comes together to make a spectacular AI, which in turn means spectacular firefights. At least it did in Fear. For the first third or so of the game, you're not fighting the utterly awesome clone soldiers of the original, you're fighting some private security force. And while they have more or less the same AI, they simply aren't as fun to fight. They don't look quite right, they don't sound quite right. It's like going from the Half-Life Marines to the Half-Life 2 Combine. Uh, thankfully, you'll soon find yourself fighting clones and... Uh, well, that's it, pretty much. Like the original, you're really only fighting clone soldiers. While I could overlook this in the original, once is really enough. If a developer is recycling a game, the least they could do is try to improve upon its obvious and widely acknowledged flaws. Okay, so there are a few other enemies. These half-naked mutant guys show up for about half a chapter, and there are about ten ninja guys in the entire game. But that's pretty much it. It's not a huge problem. I mean, the clones are awesome. But the only thing the game really has to drive it forward is the next fight, and they're all pretty much the same. Slow motion has been altered for worse. It no longer slows down time nearly as much as the original, but your slow-mo tank is much larger. This means that you can use slow motion in pretty much every single fight in the entire game, which eliminates the tactical element of conservation and intelligent use. But it also massively reduces the coolness factor, as you can no longer relish every single bullet as it spirals through the air. The sensation of impacts that made the original so intense is just completely gone. In Fear 2, it simply feels like a generic slow motion that many games make use of. Add to this the weird blood, and the act of shooting a guy in the face which was so masterfully executed in the original has become rather humdrum. Now, the weird blood. 
Okay, so I love violence. I love gratuitous violence even more, and most of all, I love stylized gratuitous violence. And that seems to be what Fear 2 has gone for. It's done this with over the top use of weird off colour blood. Blood is great, you know, the more the better. But the Gears of War style off colour cartoony stylized blood looks ridiculously out of place and generally awful. It made me want to not shoot enemies. And the enemies seem to glow white as well, a tedious effect. Uh, the colours in the game are just all wrong. And I wish I could stop the criticism there, but there's more. The pistol is a pathetic pea shooter now, with a stupid design and an awful audio effect, but worse still, you can't dual wield them. One of the coolest things in Fear is that pistols remain relevant throughout the entire game, and dual wielding them in slow motion, the proper slow motion of the original, was awesome. In Fear 2, it's an afterthought. The combat shotgun also has an utterly pathetic sound, which is reason enough for me to not want to use it. The rest of the weapons are fine, and with everything from an assault rifle to a napalm launcher, you're sure to find something you like. The game is also remarkably short. All things considered, that's probably a good thing, but it's really inexcusable that a game that, in terms of the evolution of gameplay, is barely even worthy of expansion pack status, is about six and a half hours long. Now, I'm not one to criticise length, usually, but it's just one more reason, and there are many reasons, to be deeply unimpressed with this game. And then, there's the controls. The old school FPS gamers and the left-handed don't use WASD, they use arrow keys. Fear 2 supports arrow keys, which is fine, but a number of other keys that WASD players need aren't supported. You can't bind the delete key. The game recognises end and number pad 1 as being the same key, and the game doesn't recognise side mouse buttons. This is a symptom of console-oriented multi-platform development. While this probably won't be an issue for most players, it's an issue all the same, and from a company like Monolith, it's simply inexcusable. A further symptom of console-oriented multi-platform development is that I can no longer save my game manually. Autosave is a legitimate option for some games, but not for an action-oriented first-person shooter. I don't want to have control of my own games taken away from me like that when there's no legitimate reason for it. Plus, every time it autosaves, it tells me to not switch my computer off. How many people actually turn their computers off in the middle of a gaming session? You know, I'm not playing on a 360, I'm playing on a PC. Some improvements have been made, though. The original Fear had a rather, well, stupid approach to horror. The character Alma kept jumping out at you from the shadows, which is, of course, a shock tactic, the lowliest form of horror. But to make matters even stupider, it's quickly established that she means you no real harm. So, from a horror perspective, what was the point? Well, for Fear 2, it seems Monolith has realised there was no point. The cheap shock tactics of the original game are almost entirely gone. The game relies instead on a generally creepy atmosphere, with locations like an elementary school and a hospital facility, but even this atmosphere takes a bit of a back seat. The end result is a game that's less stupid, but it doesn't seem to know what it's meant to be now. There's pretty decent multiplayer, featuring the usual assortment of game modes. Deathmatch, Team Deathmatch, Capture and Defend, Attack vs Defense, Capture the Flag. It's all stuff you've seen before, and while it's fine in Fear 2, with games like Counter Strike, Team Fortress 2, The Battlefields, Call of Duty 4 and numerous other specialised online FPS games out there. Anything less feels rather redundant. You can probably get a handful of hours out of the online modes, but you'll probably quite quickly find yourself going back to your mainstay online FPS games. Points for trying here, but again, it feels a little redundant. I have low standards when it comes to visuals, so the fact that the game is running in an enhanced version of the original Fear Engine doesn't bother me at all. The lighting is a little fuzzy, and characters with visible faces seem a little rubbery, but it looks fine and it should run well on most systems. With the exception of the pistol and the combat shotgun, the audio is magnificent. Just like the original, the music is timed perfectly, kicking in just as firefights kick off. And the above weapon effects notwithstanding, the sounds of the firefights are exactly what you want them to be. The original Fear is, for all its imperfections, a magnificent game. And that magnificent game can still be seen in Fear 2. But one thing after another has been stripped away and one too many poor tweaks have been made. And while no one change or addition is awful, there's an enormous cumulative effect that's... Well, let me put it this way. Watching the credits, I was shocked that so many people could have been involved in the development of Fear 2. 
The final game feels like a combination of several awful focus groups and the half-hearted efforts of about 15 people. Rather than remaking Fear, like the Timegate developed expansions, Monolith has tried to recreate Fear, and they have not done a very good job of it. I thought Condemned was just a hiccup for Monolith, but after Fear 2, there's clearly one less heavyweight FPS developer to keep an eye on.